So The Dash. It was a viral Kickstarter campaign that raised $3.3 million, which was more than 10 times their goal to make the first truly wireless headphones, where there were no cables or any sort of connections between one ear and the other, or your phone or playback device. So now, almost two years later, and more than a year after it was supposed to initially ship, let's see how the dash stacks up to what we were originally promised. So as you can maybe tell from intro, I'm not 100% thrilled about the Dash, but let's start out with some of the very unique pros of the first truly wireless headphones. So first up, they are really stealthy. They're pretty small, they fit right inside your ear, and although they take up a portion of what people will see of your ear, as long as someone couldn't see your ear directly, they would have no idea that you're wearing headphones. But that's kind of a double-edged sword because the way that the Dash is designed, you can only use the right earbud solo. That's the only one that communicates with your phone. The left earbud just communicates with the right, so you can either use the right by itself or the right and the left, but never just the left. But another thing I love about the Dash is its carrying case. It's a really high quality build, fully aluminum, and has this nice metal jacket that slides over top of it with still a window where you can see your charging status and the magnets inside. The way that the Dash charges is through these little magnets that are on the inside of the earbud, and you can just kind of drop it right into the case and it has this really satisfying click. Expanding that a little bit, the Dash in general is a really high quality device. The build I got has very beautifully machined parts. All the seams line up exactly correctly and it just looks really sweet. The little characteristic circular light is as advertised. Another thing the Dash does really well is the microphone that's inside the right ear. I was on a phone call with someone and I was walking outdoors where there was wind and the person said they could hear me great. So audio quality actually holds up really well through the jawline microphone. Also the Dash are waterproof down to one meter and are Bradgy approved for swimming and surfing. And built into the Dash are four gigabytes of internal storage with playlist management through the touch controls. So either while swimming or just out for a run, you now have the option for complete freedom from phones and cables. So I tried taking a shower with my headphones and it worked, but it was a little weird. Okay, and sound quality was a non issue for me. At some points I wish they could get a little bit louder, but they're almost always great for my taste with a satisfying amount of bass. I'm not an audiophile, but they definitely hold their own against similar headphones like the Jaybird Bluebud X's. Also, it's worth noting that the packaging is really stellar. It unfolds like a book that at some point has two pages missing. Maybe those are for the post-Kickstarter retail sales. But without a doubt, the many included stickers are a really nice bonus. <laughs> okay, next one, next one, next one. <laughs> here, here, ready? Rip it off. Okay, and I guess it's worth noting that the leash exists, and I'm glad it does for extra security during high stakes moments, but unfortunately it's a little tricky to attach to the dash and requires that you use the fit sleeves, or whatever they're called, to hold it in place. More on that later. So earlier today, as I was editing this video, Bradgy released new firmware, update version 1.3.0. So okay, it's fantastic how much effort Bradgy is putting into its firmware improvements, and this update made a real difference. Good companies care about dramatically improving their products and expanding their functionality even after launch. And there are plenty of signs that these updates will keep coming. Fantastic work, Bragi. The Dash tries to do a lot, a ton, maybe too much, and so this is the part where they tried something and it kind of worked. So one of the best examples of this is the touch controls. The touch controls in principle are great. They offer a ton of functionality and they're rather intuitive to use. What's really an issue is that every time I go to put in my headphones or reposition them, I end up mashing a dozen controls on the touch pads and I have no idea where I am in the headphones and the only way to fix the situation is to actually pull out my phone and go back to whatever I was listening to. One thing to note is that if the dash are ever more than a few feet apart, they won't be able to communicate with each other. So you won't hear music and you won't be able to activate like touch controls and stuff like that. So another thing I was really excited about during the Kickstarter was the audio transparency feature. This is where it utilizes the microphones that are built into the dash in order to allow you to hear the world around you 
uh, along with your music. So I bike a lot, I'd love to be able to be more aware of my surroundings, but because the dash is picking up sound through a microphone, when you're biking or doing anything in the wind, the wind completely obscures pretty much all other sounds. So all you can hear is the wind and it doesn't really work at all. However, if wind isn't a problem, the audio transparency is directional. So you can kind of hear where different sounds are coming from, which actually works really, really well. So you can see there are a bunch of areas where the dash really tries to do something new, cool and cutting edge, but it doesn't quite get there. So now let's go into the cons. Things are just straight bad or things that are just really disappointing. The Bluetooth range is really not good enough. In just regular usage scenarios where I have my headphones in and my phone in my pants pocket, I would, depending on the scenario, get frequent micro dropouts where there's just a skip in the music that's like half a second long. So Bluetooth does a horrible job penetrating water. So even things like your body parts, like your hand or something, I would go into my pocket to pull out my phone and just in the act of pulling out my phone, my hand would block it for long enough that the dash would completely disconnect and then I'd have to go into my phone to the Bluetooth settings and reconnect the dash. But Bluetooth does a great job of penetrating other things like walls and even metal doors. So I had no problem going into the next room or even two rooms over and still having Bluetooth connectivity with my phone as long as I didn't put my hand up to my ear because that would instantly cut it out. Connection troubles just kind of plague this device. And as long as we're harping on the dash, there's a noticeable amount of just kind of white noise in the background until you start listening to something. Okay, one of my biggest complaints about the dash is that you always have to carry around the case. The only way to turn them off is by actually putting them back in the case. Bradgy, please give us a way to, through software, through my phone, or through some touch control, just turn off the dash so I can keep them in my pocket or wherever else. Let's talk about comfort. I think the Blue Buds are extremely comfortable. I listen to them in the over ear position, which I think is great. And I have the comply ear tips, which kind of mold themselves to your ears. These never fall out of my ears and they feel great. The dash aren't super comfortable for long listening sessions, but that kind of brings me to my next point. You won't have to worry about long listening sessions because the battery life is so limited. Bradgy on their website claims about four hours of listening. I say that's really pretty accurate. Three hours of listening if you're doing health tracking. Although you don't really have to worry about health tracking because the heart rate monitor never works. And it's built into the left ear. So if you want health monitoring, you have to have both earphones in your ears. So now I've gotten the heart rate sensor to work much better as opposed to its almost worthless state previously. And although it's gotten more sensitive in finding my pulse, it's done so with a slight hit to accuracy. Also, it now reconnects to Bluetooth much more reliably after micro dropouts. But I think all of these problems will just keep improving over time. And now compare all of that to my Jaybird Bluebud X. I just have no problems with these and their Bluetooth connection. It's rock solid and a pleasure to use, whereas this thing, I'm constantly worried that it's gonna drop out and it usually does. <laughs> okay, and one last thing, they need to chill with the branding. Let me go through a few. Okay, you have the charger, ear touch, the left dash and the right dash, the activity tracker, fit sleeve. You even have the data hub. Come on, just like cut it out with that. So I gotta say, my original ending to this video was pretty harsh. I think it's an okay pair of headphones. At best, at almost double the price or more, the Bradgies don't give you really anything else for your money except for a headache. But it's these kind of updates that make me much more excited about the Dash and far more confident in Braggy's future. So yeah, it's expensive and there are a lot of really early kinks in the system, but it's clear that Braggy is committed to making it better. You're paying an early adopter's tax, definitely, but this is a product that can evolve alongside you, built by a company that's dedicated towards continual progress. For many, the Dash is a great buy, but unless you're sold on waterproofing or internal storage, I'd say the Jaybirds take the cake in comfort, battery life, and Bluetooth reliability at almost a quarter of the price. Okay, uh, it's just not quite what I was hoping it would be. Uh, thanks for watching the review. See ya. Yeah.